Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome once again to Edge of Reality TV. I'm Willie Hassel, along with the lovely, good the evening. mystical, the mysterious Lynn Nicholson. Ah, thank I'll you, I'll give Willie. you the full intro this month. How's I love that? being How's cryptic. What was that? I said, I'll give you the full intro this month. Oh, yeah. thank you. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? I'm, hey, you know, I'm good. I'm doing just fine. Wonderful. Fine. We have a great guest tonight. We do have a great guest tonight. That's right. And I would uh, like to welcome to the show. He is the founder of the Greater Boston Paranormal Associates, well, co-founder and director of Greater Boston Paranormal Associates. He has been featured on Most Terrifying Places and Kindred Spirits on the Travel Channel. Ooh, and I didn't know that. You know, now you know. See, he's <laughs> more famous than you realize. Yes, he is. We've got a celebrity uh, in our is, midst. Yep, yeah. and he is our good friend, Don DeCristofaro. Welcome to Edge Welcome, Reality. Don. Good to see you guys. <laughs> Thank you for coming. We appreciate it. Yeah. Always, always happy to see you guys. And making that long haul up here. <laughs> yeah, it really wasn't a problem. Like I said, I, I enjoy seeing you guys. And, uh, you. and uh, I like coming up here, so. So how long have you been into this? When you got organized, you say you were a co-founder. So how long ago was that? Uh, the the Greater Boston Paranormal mm. Associates? Yeah. I suppose, you know, like so many other groups, I suppose if you talk about Mac 1 versus <laughs> Mac 2, you know <laughs> what I mean? The false start. You know, the, yeah, the, you know, this current iteration, yeah. this, yeah. this, this, what I will call the, the, the version of the GBPA that's gotten it right, I'll, I'll say 10 years. Okay. All right. So how long have you been into this sort of thing? You were into uh, it evidently before Greater Paranormal, oh, Great yeah. Boston. I mean, yeah. I was, you know, Lynn, I'm, I'm kind of unusual, I think, among our peers in the paranormal community in that I never had, until I started investigating, I never had any experiences. Truly? No, never. I, I just, when I was little, you know, my friends were reading Robert Louis Stevenson's Kidnapped. I was reading Hans Holzer's Ghost Hunter. Ah. It's just the way it's Man just, after my own heart. You know, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever it, it was, that's just the way it, the way it yep. shook out. And then I think I was 15 and my brother, Ted, my oldest brother gave me, I still have a first edition hardcover copy of uh, John Keel's Mothman Prophecies. Oh, no kidding. And, uh, that, and that ignited the, your and, curiosity? And that was it for me. There was no going back. There, and, and there was no just reading about it anymore. Well, wasn't so, Twilight Zone on about that time, too? Weren't you into Twilight Zone? Yeah, I, Twilight Zone was on about that time, too, I guess. Oh, I couldn't get so, enough of that. So it was more of a case with you, like with me. You didn't have any experiences. It was more curiosity. Yeah, you know? yep. That's exactly yeah. what it was. It was just curiosity yeah. and... Um, you know, it was pretty clear to me that something was going on. Well, when did you start having your own experiences or did you? No, it wasn't until, um, so, so the Salem came back to Quincy from, from the mothball fleet in 1993. Uh, and I had been, at that point I had been, I had a friend and we were kind of doing cemeteries <clears throat> and. But really, nothing of any of any real consequence. Mm -hmm. And then they had a they had this in, I want to say in two thousand. They had this big ceremony down at, in Quincy Point, which is where I grew up. It's where the shipyard is. And mm -hmm. It was called Making Waves in Quincy Point, and it was all about mm. uh, the point's maritime heritage and oh. and how the shipyard affected uh, affected the area. You know that part of the city. And I had been, you know, my family, you know, we grew up about four blocks from the shipyard. And I did what, I won't say what we called it, but I did basically the, the Quincy Point Italian thing, which was, you know, I graduated from high school. I joined the Navy. I got out of the Navy. I worked at the shipyard. And, you know, that's what my grandfather did. That's what my dad did. That's what my brothers did. And, and that's, just oh, really? it, that's just the way it worked. So they asked me to give a speech on the ship. Mm -hmm. about what it was like growing up growing up around the shipyard at that time. And after the speech, uh, one of the volunteers came up to me, Tom, and said, did you know the ship was haunted? And I said, yeah, sure it is. 
<laughs> and he said, uh, he said, yeah, come back tonight. Well, and this was just after this, she came back? No, this was in 2000, I'm going to say. Oh, 2000. And this okay. was Tom who? Which Tom? Tom Ventasi was. Oh, okay. He was, he was really the guy who did the paranormal stuff aboard the ship at that time. Oh, okay. So I, I'm sorry, when you said Tom earlier, I thought that's her, who you were referring to. Oh. Anyway, I, um, I went back that night and we walked around the ship and I wasn't all that impressed, to be honest. And then at some point, I said I wanted to go down to the CIC, the Combat Information Center. And Tom said, well, that's really not an active location in terms of the paranormal. And I said, well, that's all right, but it's the most Navy looking room on the ship. I really would like to get a look at what it looks like on a ship this big. So, so my friend and I went down to the CIC and we spent a little time there. Now, CIC aboard Salem, there's only one way up and down. It's a very, one very tight ladder. So we were down there, we climbed to the top of the ladder. I got to the top, closed the gate behind me <clears throat> and heard a dog barking at the bottom of the ladder oh, as clearly as, as we're talking right now. And the guy that was with me said, there he is. Hey, Poochie. <laughs> and um, so you I, thought at the time it was a real dog, right? I, until, well, until I, he told I knew you. there couldn't have been a real dog. Yeah. We'd just been down there. Like I said, well, and there was, sure, yeah. there was oh, only so one down way there, up and down. There's up. no way. So I, I was pretty impressed, and, and that was pretty much it. I haven't I haven't left the ship for too long. I've been you were hooked. I was persona non grata for a very short stretch, but yeah. uh, um, but I haven't been off the ship for too many times since then. It's been a long time. Now. So I don't know if the audience knows this, but you lead all of these investigations on board the ship. Well, my my group, yep we we um, we manage all the paranormal stuff aboard the ship. You know, groups that come in to to do their own private investigations and then public investigations, you know, when people can come aboard and do it. We, we manage those nice. as well. So. Yeah, we were going to do this in the last quarter, but since we've already started on it. Well, we could always, you know, always skip and yeah, come back whatever to you'd it. like. Okay, you can come back to it. Whatever you want. Okay, no, that's fine. Well, well, we were hoping to leave <laughs> some of the, the secret exciting stuff to the end because we want to talk about an upcoming expo. Um, but I also wanted to cover some of the other really scary places that you've been. I mean, you've, you've done a lot of investigating places that Willie and I have both gone to. Sure. One, you mentioned it yourself today, the, the Wildwood Sanitarium in Salamanca, mm -hmm. New York. Um, it, the place was built in the 1800s, and it was a sanitarium, then a TB hospital, and then a, a, an osteopathic clinic. Um, and what was really neat about that is they used a lot of um, modern technologies. They used um, a holistic healing attitude or protocol. They used UV light therapy, which I'd never heard of before, um, electric battery baths, and then bone stretching. Yeah, they were, they were way ahead of their time. Yeah. Although it's kind of funny, way ahead of their time, but by the same token, uh, some of it sounds... Um, Almost torturing almost yeah. archaic yeah. you know bone yeah. stretch oh, yeah. yeah but then again you have to realign the spine you know so why not <clears throat> i suppose <clears throat> i suppose but i know when we were there we were talking about the bone stretching thing and and that doesn't sound like no matter how no matter how modern that therapy is that didn't sound as old as something i, I wonder if it really too. hurts or if they just realign <laughs> it, it doesn't sound like fun Bone well, stretching, you know. <laughs> well, well, what I wanted to get at was, was it mostly adults that went there? Were there children? There were a lot of toys and yeah, dolls we, and whatnot. <clears throat> Honestly, the, the, the only real activity we had there was a child. Really? Yeah. Um, Female or male? A male, a young boy. Yep, he, that was the only real activity we had. Um, but it was, you know, it was just two of us. So, you know, we covered the place, but we, you know, with only two people, you can only spend so much time in each room. Yeah. yeah. So, so we're going yeah. back in February with a bigger crew, um, and hopefully we'll get a little bit more evidence this oh. time around. It was a great place. We enjoyed going. Yeah, I bet it was very neat. And it's, and it's only 20 minutes or so from one of our favorite places. And what hmm. would that be? Oh. Well, that would one be. of my favorite places. <laughs> that would be where we're going the, the following The Salem. Yeah. You know, so, um, so. Was there any kind of interaction with any any of your crew members with either, well, you said a little boy, but was there anything to do with like a white dog? 
I was picking up on a white dog. Not that I'm aware of. No? Mm -mm. And how about a, like a 12-year-old girl? No. And I got to tell you, um, it was just Eva and Aggie and I. And Eva's, Eva's pretty receptive to children. Um, so, so I think that if that activity was there... You know, you know, they and, come and, and they clearly, go. Clearly, you know? it comes and goes. Yeah. You know, that's how it works. Yeah. But I think if that activity had been there, I would think you would have been the one to. Um, was there anything kind of on the side of torturous that happened there? Or was it, I mean, it wasn't a place where people usually went and died, right? No, we, we didn't get the, we didn't get the impression. The, 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 a couple of the deaths, some of the deaths that were there were family <clears throat> deaths, you know, um, mm. The family that moved there after it closed, the family that lived there and all okay. the things. So some of the deaths, we did get a little bit of activity in one of the bedrooms upstairs uh, that that we, we think was a guy who lived there. There's a, oh. you know, in, in one of the middle bedrooms, there's a, there's a painting of the guy with the motorcycle. You know oh. what I'm talking about? Yeah. We got some activity in that room, some light activity, like cat ball type activity. Um, hmm. with where was it that I, there was a room full of toys, yep. was it? Okay. And there was um, like a yellow toy huh. that spoke. Well, did did it not say Eva? I, yeah, we, we thought it did. I thought it, uh, that's what I heard first out of its mm. mouth and then it said something else. And when it moved back and forth. Yeah, no, we definitely thought it said Eva. Yeah. And then there was another doll that was, Anyway, that was a spooky looking doll dressed. <coughs> it had red on it. It too seemed to say Eva. I don't know that I don't remember the other one saying Eva. I remember the other one <clears throat> wondering how in, in what in what universe that could have been referred to as a toy. Um, it was bizarre. Be, because that was a twisted little thing. But the yellow thing was kind of like a I don't even know. It was, it was like an action motivated yeah, it was, toy it was, somehow. It was a pretty po popular series of of uh, of animated animated characters, I want to say, and and we were ninety nine percent sure it said Eva. Well, that's what it sounded like to mm -hmm. me. So I'm thinking, what is this a pre recording? And then was something overdubbed on it? But I don't know how. I don't. I don't. Know. They didn't know we were coming. I mean, they knew we were coming, but they didn't have our names. Well, yeah, I mm -hmm. didn't know if maybe. A, you know, sometimes you hear music in the background, and I just didn't know if maybe it had been deliberately done or if you caught the same message. Yeah, we definitely caught it, no question about it. Well, that is a one spooky video. If anybody wants to see it, it's a Wildwood Sanitarium in Telemanca, New York, and it's on your website, yep. right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So the, the two dolls, that they both have these recordings on them. <laughs> they they and, were bizarre. Like I said, one of them, you know, that one is this little yellow thing. The other one... It's like a duck. Yeah, a kinda, feathered duck know. or something like that. I was oh, I, I was going to say a Teletubby. Oh yeah, it, those, it looked like that. One Big of those little belly. Kind of things. But the other thing, as I said, I don't, I don't even, I can't even imagine who the, who the heck. You're not talking about the thing, thing with the pointed teeth, uh, are you? Yeah. Oh, that that was really. Bizarre. Oh no 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 no. But You're talking about the one that you saw in my. There were two. Oh no 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 no. That's that's from the ship. Oh okay. Yeah, that's very strange. But yeah, both of those um, animated dolls, which yeah. is strange, she was rocking back and forth. So did you start the rocking, or did they do it by themselves? No, we started it. You did start yeah, it. Started. Okay. All the same, though, they were creepy dolls. Creepy dolls. Yeah, they were. Yeah. So I thought maybe, you know, some <laughs> children were there, like, maybe a toddler, a female. The doll you saw on our Facebook page today was from, that's from the ship. Oh, okay. <clears throat> that that too was back was in creepy. the Halloween prop room. Of the ship, and it's Michelle got pointed brought teeth it out on some, it. <clears throat> Michelle brought it out for some reason. I can't even imagine why. Did you ever clean that out? The uh, it's cleaned out to a great degree. There's still some stuff back there, yeah. not much. <laughs> but. I, I remember, you know, on the uh, episode there. Yeah, no, there's still yeah. some stuff back yeah. there. But we don't think he's back there anymore. We think he's, we think he's up forward now. And who's he? Um, my friend, the chief. We think he's. Oh. We think he's up forward. We think he's no one, not in the ward room, but in the ward room pantry. The cook that Matt played in the video. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Well, might he not move around? Do you think he's uh, an intelligent blonde? Or is oh, no question about it. And, and I'm sure he moves around, but, yeah. he, but he used to be primarily back aft. 
in the cruise mess in the third mess area. Um, and lately, we, I anyway, have spoken to him more in the woodroom pantry. Um, huh. That's that's where we've gotten him to respond to us. That's where we talked to him before. You know, before we had our Halloween event on the ship, uh, we went there the night before and spent some time in that room. And we called the chief. And, and once we knew or had a pretty good idea we had him, we explained to him what we were doing and made sure he understood that you know, he knows us and he, he knows mm. how much we respect him and the ship. He, he, he doesn't now, seem you know? angry anymore, does he? No, no. He, okay. no. He, he, you know, but we nevertheless, we wanted to, you know, we wanted to make sure he was clear. We didn't want huh. all of a sudden for him to see these people with costumes coming aboard. <laughs> yeah, he didn't want him to think that they were making fun of him. That's right. So, no, okay. so we figured it was, best, it was best yeah. to do that. Yeah. And, sure. uh, and we didn't have any problems. So. I imagine it's kind of hard bridging the gap between the two worlds, with dealing with the paranormal and the world that the ghosts live in, and then this new modern age environment. Sure. It's got to be a hard way of interfacing the two when you're dealing with a ghost. Sure, especially especially with, and, and of course, I didn't know him. So I'm going to say especially with a guy who I assume um, was kind of an, an old school yeah, you know, an mm -hmm. old school guy to begin with. Yeah, you know, he would have struggled um, assimilating even at the time. Assimilating, never mind, you know, fifty years later, yeah. what it's like now. And he was in charge, I'm sure, of his own little domain. So, um, and, I, and I mean, I know what those guys were like. Yeah, you know, it was it was it was them. It was their kingdom, and you know, we'll be tied. Anybody who got in the way. Yep, everybody had their duty to do and don't get in my way. Um, how about moving on to the, the Victory Theater in Holyoke, Mass? Mm. Do you remember much about that? Yeah. Uh, yeah that was a recent one, wasn't it? Yeah, Very it wasn't too one. long ago. It was in, I want to say, maybe November. Um, this is a guy, a good friend of ours, who he visited the ship. And they don't do investigations at the theater, but, but he had done the ship. And he really enjoyed, we, we worked with him a couple of times, and he really enjoyed working with us. So at one point he reached out and said, hey, you know what, I know a place. Well, uh, the, mm. is he the owner of the No, thing? No. No, he just knows the owners. Because it looks like it's, you know, pretty dilapidated. Oh, it's, like it's, it's falling about apart. Ready and, to and, fall down. You know, they, there have been plans in place to... To demolish it? No, to, no? to fix it. Oh, really? A number of times. But it looks like it's keep, they, they just keep falling. They just keep falling through. You know, um, the money, the money's almost there and then it's not there and then it's <clears> almost there, looks, which is a shame because it's, you know, it's another one of those. It's a grand and, dam, you and know, I, it's yeah, beautiful. Yeah. It looks, you know, like and, it was, and, looks like it was a beautiful theater. And, yeah. and, and, and I guess just being an old man, I, I, I look at places like that <clears> and, <throat> man, another one goes. I and, know, isn't it sad? And, and it's never going to be back. Nothing right. like that. Yep. It's never going to be back. Takes money to rejuvenate um, it. So we, so yeah, we, we did a night there and um, it was a pretty crazy night. There was, there's a room down in the, in the, in the cellar below the stage. Um, part of the, part of the boiler facility. And the, the word is that there was a, a man who broke into the theater at one point, a homeless gentleman who broke into the, the theater at one point and, uh, and apparently was either smoking something or something along those lines had started a fire down there. And he was killed in the fire. Jeez. And, um, so so we spent some time down there. And I know at one point I, I asked everybody to leave. So I stood like in the boiler room and there was a long hallway. So I took a couple of, you know me, my cat balls. I just love my cat. <laughs> I, you know, no matter how long I do this, I'll always get a kick out of this damn Cat ball. Do you so, want to explain what a cat ball is? Not sure. A cat, you know, a cat ball is, it's a toy. It's a cat toy. It's a plastic toy that you sit on the floor and your cat hits it and it lights up and the cat goes nuts. It lights up from motion. Yeah. I, so, I, I haven't the slightest idea whether it really works on cats. I have a cat, but I've never used it. My cat so, could care less about it. But <laughs> I've never I, used it for the cat. How does it work paranormally when you go to an we investigation? Love them. I we mean, love them. they actually react. Absolutely. So in this uh -huh. case, I went down this hallway and I set, I want to say three of them down the hallway and I stayed down in the boiler room. 
and I was asking questions. And a couple of times, one of the cat balls in the hallway would light up. And then at some point I said, um, at some point I said, you know, dude, I'm not, I'm not here to judge you. I'm not a cop. I'm not, I'm not here to, <laughs> I'm not here to do anything. I, you know, I just want to, I just want to talk. I just want to, to hear what you have to say. You must have something. And sure enough, um, the cat ball at the far end lit, and then it went off, and the one, the next one lit. Like he was walking towards you. And then it went off, and the next one lit. And as I was standing there, kind of waiting to see what would happen, <laughs> oh, geez. I think I heard footsteps like behind me in the room. And I'm going to say I think because, to be perfectly honest, I fled. Um, <laughs> did you really? <laughs> yeah, I did. Uh, uh, and I don't flee very often. But Only when you get a good reason. <laughs> well, but, uh, how many exits were there from the position you were in? Could you none, get out another there, way? It was, there was that hallway. There was where the footsteps were behind me, and there was the door out and stairs to the Yeah, I probably would have done the same. Oh, and I didn't my want goodness. any pot or whatever the heck was behind me. So out I went. Ah, well, then but it was good. We had a good, we had a good night there. We got a lot of stuff there. Well, I got to ask you. Toward the end, at least on the internet, there is a short video, and of course, it's a dirty, dirty place. There's dust everywhere. There's uh, insulation and plaster falling. So there's a lot of dust in the atmosphere. It looks though like there are some orbs in there too. Yeah. And there was music that played. Music that played toward the end of the video, and I didn't know if someone's phone went off. It sounded like almost like a, a clip from a production of people this singing. This is the video on our Facebook page or our yeah. website? Yeah, that's short. Sure. I'll have to listen to it because I don't recall any music. Someone is on the stage. It's uh, facing, you would be on the left-hand side, and you see all of the, the orbs flying around, and then they start panning, and then you start hearing music, and it sounds like a clip from a production on the stage. Interesting. Someone <laughs> singing and then a band playing. I'll have to look again because okay. I don't recall. I don't recall any music. I know that there was a video and some pictures that were that we debated pretty hotly about, you know, shadows and, and oh. things of that nature. But you know, yeah. the lighting, um, you know, and the, sh the the natural shadows in there were just so bad. Yeah, uh, there was just so much dust that yeah, it was really difficult to to make anything out. You know. Well, what else happened in there, Don? Anything? Yeah, we know? had a couple of other experiences way up in the top of the theater, like in the projection <clears throat> booth. Projection. Uh, okay. We had some stuff fall off a shelf while we were, ah. while we were, like we were in there, and we walked out of the projection booth to go back downstairs, and something fell off a shelf uh, in the room we had just we had just left. I get so, out of so here. So yeah, we had a, we had a couple of other things happen there. It was a good it was a good night. Very cool. Oh, yeah, you'll have to. And I've always wanted video. to do a theater. I, I've never done. I've never done a theater. Well, usually yeah. they're very yeah. high yeah, energy. I'd like and to do a, a lot theater. Of theater. Energy. Yeah. yeah, I'd never yeah. done one, so I was I was really excited to do it. Willie and I got to look into doing one, maybe. You know, I was just an thinking opera we, house, but uh, we yeah, won't say anymore. I was just thinking about that. We might yep. have a because you know, usually they're house. really high energy, and it could be a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, do we have a lot? Of, how much time we got left? Are we doing good? Okay. Well, we'll just start this anyway. You guys went to Gettysburg. We did, yeah. And you had a lot of experiences there. Right? Oh man, I couldn't believe it. I mean, we so so we went, and the day we got there, we went to the cemetery that night, and we were just walking around. And I I can remember saying the cicadas were so crazy loud. It was summertime. In yeah, Miami, yeah, I can remember saying we're not going to. You know, forget about audio. Can't, can't hear anything. This is just not going to happen. <clears throat> and then we saw like hundreds of bats. Really? Well, and of course, then I realized that was because of the cicadas, I'm, sh I'm sure. Yeah. Mm. But as we're walking out of the cemetery, uh, Riley Black said, everybody stop. Everybody stop right now and take a deep breath. And I'm telling you right now, the smell of gunpowder was so strong. It was like a cannon had just been fired right next to us. Was this like dust? About dust yeah, it was. It was. It was dusk. Not yeah. quite dark. Yeah. Oh, it was. It was incredible. And like I said, Riley just said, "Everybody stop, take a deep breath." Um, 
The next day we did the car tour and it seemed like everywhere we stopped, we heard gunshots. That is amazing. I mean, it was, incre it was incredible. Although I gotta be honest, it was kind of funny. We went that night, we went, and of course it's federal property. So the feds really don't. You're limited. You know, they don't like people. Can... They don't like people. <laughs> they don't like people, period. <laughs> they don't like people in general, but, but but especially they don't like people going to these locations. Yeah, at night. they limit you on so, the types so, of equipment. So it's so funny, you know. You know, my guy Lou and I are driving his jeep, and and he was like, "No, no, I know where we'll go." And all of a sudden, we come over a crest, and there's a whole bunch of blue lights. And he said, "Okay, why don't we why don't we skip that part? We'll turn around here. We, <laughs> we'll we go turn around. Else. We banged a right." <laughs> We went up a road a little bit. We got to the top of a crest. He started to turn a left, and there's a bunch of blue lights. And he was like, okay, why don't we go back the other way, except there were a bunch of blue lights down the other way, too. At some point, we just said, I think it's probably They had you surrounded. I think it's probably just time to go home. <laughs> okay. So what about when you went to the, the Saks Bridge? Yeah, with the Saks Bridge. Um, and we did that the last night we were there. Jimmy Hearn and I went. And he got a great, what you know, he got what I thought was a great series of pictures of looking, looking off the bridge, what looked to me to be some kind of entity, a shadow going from right to left uh, across the front of the bridge down into the woods. Now, hold it right there. Isn't that the same bridge that our friend George went to? I photograph. believe so. Yeah. I think it is. There's, there's a couple Sacks. of bridges. There's a couple of them. There's a suicide bridge yep. and the sand sax bridge. It might have been suicide. It might have been suicide. Sure. Okay, why don't you continue yeah. with yours? So and the, what... Yeah, this was Sax Bridge. And and I'm telling you right now, a lot of people came back and said, ah, you know how it is. People came back and said, ah, it's this, it's that. I don't know, that man. I, I looked at those pictures, and of course, you know, to me, there's nothing there. And then it's there. Yeah, and there's, then in the next picture, there's nothing there. There's nothing there. And that's on your Facebook or website. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. 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 I mean, you know what I've I mean? Seen, I, yeah. I don't know how you, you know, how do you say it's dirt rising up from the, really? And it, it was just in that one picture. Yeah. Um, yeah. So but, he got what I thought was this great series of pictures of this thing. But Don, it, it almost looked like a black Casper. And it seemed, what I saw, it seemed to have two large eyes set toward the very edges of its head okay. area. Okay. All right. It was very spooky. Yeah. It was, I thought. I thought they were great. I thought they were great pictures. They were very impressive. Oh, I did too. I, I thought, thought they were great yeah. pictures. Jimmy, they, I'll tell I you, did. Jimmy is one of the newest additions to our gang. He's a guy that I've known for somewhere in the neighborhood of two hundred years, and um, don't age yourself now. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind aging myself at this point. Um, and he used to come with us occasionally when he could. Yeah. But now he's he's been a full fledged member of the crew for mm. probably a year and a half now, maybe two years, and, and what a great addition! He's he, oh, that's he is good. A, he is a video machine, uh, and a and a photographic wizard. Hmm. Mean, um, it, it takes it takes a lot to impress me with photographs, paranormal. Yeah, I hear. But, you. but those those were good. I, yeah, I they thought were they good. were pretty good, and and you're exactly right, Willie. I don't. I, you know, the vast, vast majority of pictures I look at is, well, okay. I mean, yeah, I guess if I you, could, If you say so. Yeah. I yeah. guess maybe if I took them, I'd, I'd take your point of view as well. Uh, but, uh, but I don't know, it just doesn't yeah. look like. What do you think about photographs where, you, where you're on a haunted site and you get something that looks like a double exposure from a digital camera? That's happened to us several times. We've seen several of those. And Since just it is no impossible to double expose on a digital <coughs> camera, you know. That's camera. what they say. Yeah. Right. So how but, do you get these But at the odd? same time, <clears throat> technical malfunctions are not are not impossible, right? And that's true. Yeah. You know, that's true. But a particularly haunted location, that's when it seems to happen. Like where? Are you talking oh, about something? In well, the James House in particular. Okay. Yes. All right. We we went to. I was saying that um, we went out to Winchenden. I went out to Winchenden with uh, some friends, not not my gang, but um, a gang of other people, and, and it was just something to do. And we had a good time. And they posted. One of the women posted a picture, and and 
somebody posted it on Facebook and it got all this amazing feedback. What an unbelievable, unbelievable. I never said anything because frankly, I said, you gotta be kidding me. And what was it? It was, she had, she had taken, she had taken a photograph of a portrait out in the hallway and she had superimposed it onto a mannequin of the same person in one of the in one of the rooms in one of the displays. I mean, so it was she, a she like she trick photography. She took it at an angle where the mannequin was reflected in the picture. You mean? Or? No, no. She 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 worked it. Yeah, she oh, oh, shot oh, post. Oh, okay. she oh, post. Okay. And I didn't like I said when it when it was posted on Facebook. I just, I just didn't say anything yeah. at all. Well, was it done as a joke to see how many people fell for it? No. Oh, I don't think so. Oh, geez. So. That gives paranormal stuff a bad. Yeah, yeah. It and, does. I, and I mean, does. I think at some like point that. everybody realized. At if you looked really close, in fact, if you looked really close, you could see the picture frame. Oh, jeez. Um, all right. Hey, we're at the bottom of the hour. Yeah. Yeah, but there's so, something else I want to add to your bridge when we come back. Yep, when okay. we come back. So uh, we'll be back in uh, just a couple minutes after this short break with our guest, Don DeCristofaro. Great. So we'll be right back. Yeah, well, welcome back to Edge of Reality TV. Tonight, uh, great guest, Don DeCristofaro from the Greater Boston Paranormal Associates is here and he's talking about all kinds of investigations and spooky stuff and we were discussing Gettysburg before the break. We were. So there, let's uh, go ahead and well, con there continue with that. Two really haunted bridges there. One's the Suicide Bridge and one's the Sax Bridge and we were talking about the Sax Bridge. Mm -hmm. Now we do have a an associate of ours and we'll just say his first name is George and he went down there and apparently it was a Suicide Bridge and he caught something on his camera the same way that Jim Hearn did down at the far end of the bridge. Now, it's hard to say what the heck it was, but he feels that when he got home, he had an attachment and that he got seriously ill. And there was a correlation made between the attachment and his illness, seriously ill. So my question is this, like when you were there and Jim Hearn was there photographing, do you do anything for protection? Uh, yeah, well, in all honesty, that particular night, no, I don't think we did. I, you know, I, because I don't think it was, I think Jimmy and I just drove out there. Yeah. You know what I mean? And started mm -hmm. taking pictures. I don't think we were thinking of it I know. as an investigation. Get, you know what I mean? Yeah, it was, yeah. it was kind just of like a sightseeing was, thing, right? Jimmy and I had, had nothing to do. It was nighttime and. Uh, there was oh, there was a big party going on, and neither one of us is really <laughs> party one of us is really into that. So we, so so we went. Um, so we no, I don't. We I'm sure we didn't. That I normally normally we do before you go. Absolutely before. Well, no, when we leave when, a location. Oh, and when you leave a location. Absolutely. We we used to. It used to be very informal. You know the way I always did it. Frankly. Uh, when I was like, for instance, when I was leaving the ship, I would usually be, well, I'm almost always the last one off the ship. And I'd stand on the gangway after I locked the gate and I'd turn around and, Don't and, come with me. and basically <laughs> say, you have to stay where you are. You're not welcome to come with me. Mm -hmm. You're not welcome in my home. You're not welcome in my car. You're not welcome to attach yourself to me or any of my belongings. You're not welcome with my family. I like you, but... Yeah, you, you need to stay where you are, and you know damn well I'll see you again soon. So, okay. so that's that's it, and and that's always yeah. done okay for me. Good, you know whether it's whether I've just been lucky or whether that's worked or what I don't I don't know. Well, Lately, because we've had some some experiences that I'm I'm reluctant to go into only because they were personal to other members of my team that I'm not really. Sh Okay. I'm not really sure I'd, I'm comfortable going into mm, yeah. without Okay. Okay. Um, so, so we came up with something a little more formal now. Okay. That when we leave the ship, we stand in the pocket lot and we do something a little more formal now. 
that's good because I did want to reiterate that uh, Leith mentioned that when you go to these really severely haunted sites where there's been a lot of tragedy, that has a tendency to draw negative energy. So even if the soldiers themselves aren't into scaring all the daylights out of you, there's stuff that, that lives off of that yeah. kind of tragic, that tragic energy, and you've got to protect yourself. Sure. So I don't think he goes anywhere now, this friend of ours, w without some sort of protection, because he struggled for a year with the illness that he had. And so speaking of really haunted places. Yes, is, we have another one coming up. Yes, there it is, Blake. <laughs> yeah. So as I said, when you go to, when we go to, um, when we go to watch us in February, we're going to go here the next time. Um, hmm. How many times have you been here now? This next time will be my fifth. fifth really? It'll be, the, it'll be the group's fourth. Suzanne and I went with Jack Kenna right. years ago. But the group, this will be the group's fourth. Okay, so this is the Hinsdale House in where in New York? In Napa? Hinsdale, New York. York. Oh, Hinsdale, Hinsdale, New York. Okay. Yeah. What is it that keeps drawing you back there then, Don? I, I wish I could I wish I could tell you. I, I know that I, I had a long talk with Dan uh Clays about it out in Salem in November. And he said there are plenty of people who feel the same way. They, I they're know, drawn I hear to that a lot. People that, just well, it's very and they just but, can't help it. They just can't yeah. go back. It's so it's, negative. There's so many yeah. negative things that happen there. But there's something about it. Yeah. <coughs> well, it's it's amazing. <clears throat> did I'm, did you I, ever hear the voices in the woods trying to draw you? I, last time we were there, we had a lot. I don't know. I was going to say a lot more. I don't know if that's the case, but <clears throat> we certainly had a lot of activity up in the woods. And what time of year was it? Was it the fall? September. Uh huh. Fall. September. Things come close alive in the fall. to uh, Labor Day, right? September 11th. Oh, was it really? Yeah. yeah. The first time we went was September 13th. It was a Friday night, a full moon, thunderstorm. Oh, there you go. The whole nine yards. Oh, man. <laughs> wow. And it was an extremely active night. I believe it. Is that the and night that you got attacked? That was the night that I got attacked. Yeah. And also, uh, Mike was outside by the driveway smoking a cigar, and he heard the voice from the wood line say, come here. And that scared and, the living daylights out of him. Yeah, yeah, he ran back in the house. Uh, Jimmy, that's, Jimmy got to come here from the woods. Did he? Oh, did Sorry. he? Um, you know, we had, a, last time we were there, we decided to do, uh, I don't know whether it was the Ouija board or, what the heck? Oh, it you was. did that at Slater's Mill yeah, too, but yeah. you did it here at Kinsdale. Some, we did. I don't. I don't. I can't remember what it was, but we were sitting around the kitchen table in at Hinsdale, and and Eva, because Eva, there was a little boy who Eva thinks she had brought home with her. Oh, with her the last time. So this time she was anxious to bring him home. So she felt all this time that she had the attachment. She, she then. felt all this time that this little boy was at her house. Ooh. So she was anxious to bring him back. Yeah. And uh, I can't, I can't go into, I, I can't go into the whole, mm -hmm. the whole story. But I'll tell you this: we we think he was, we think he did go back. And and it was so. What happened was so powerful that. Sandra Morgan and I, Amanda Cook was sitting on one side of the table. I was sitting here and Sandra Morgan was sitting next to me. And all of a sudden, Amanda just burst into tears. Mm. I mean, just burst into tears. And then all of a sudden, she, she seemed to feel better. And then something, whoosh, literally almost knocked Sandra and I off our chairs. <sighs> Like went through us, and we think it was this this little dude going home. Maybe. Wow. Oh, it was the craziest thing. You know, you have things happen to you physically. Yeah. But that was the and first time anything like that had ever happened. When she burst out in tears, did she? Was it like did she feel? Yeah, a, she, a child or something. She she felt as though she later said she was a child's mother, and mm. that she really? was they would she was so happy that he was back. Very, very interesting because the night we were there, Kimberly we were all in the uh, in the living room, 
and all of a sudden one of the one of the women just burst out crying because she felt the presence of a little girl hugging her. and and then a few minutes her husband got her calm down and everything then a few minutes later another one of the women she had her back to that little alcove we were talking about yeah yeah and she, all of a sudden she she felt two arms come up around her waist oh, like a little child and she freaked out she got up and ran out of the ran out of the house and it took quite a while for her to calm her down but uh, she said she wasn't scared she was it's unnerving most, and yeah and mostly she'd never been touched before she said but mostly she felt sad because she knew it was a little child you know yeah sure so it's a very similar situation yeah to, to what you yeah it is. it is it is so what you felt was something moving through oh you. right through us I did mean, you feel unbelievable. cold? Did you feel a coldness, no. or mm -hmm. just um, maybe an emotional wave? Yeah, then? just a wave. Well, it was incredible, and I, like I said, I've I've been touched, I've felt things, but never anything like that. And it was the two of us. I mean, we just, we both turned and looked both at each other yeah. and said, "Wow, what was that?" Huh. Well, what about that room upstairs? Isn't there a little girl's room upstairs? Uh. Well, one of the little bedrooms upstairs was the uh, the daughter. Well, forget how many the Dandy family. How many daughters? There was two daughters or three. I, I think there were three. Yeah. Because I think two were in the. I think the the room at the right at the top of the stairs, the room that's just to the right. That's the one. That's, that's the one. And that's then there the were one two I the got. Yeah. In the next room. Oh, there was two. I think sharing so. that. I think. So. I don't know how. I don't know how that whole family fit in. I mean, the place is not very big. Yeah, so, no, it's, you know, it's pretty those, small. Those two bedrooms are, are like closets. Well, then, what, do you know anything about the exorcism that they performed on somebody I, after I they left? I really don't. So there's something not so great hanging around, but who I knows really, if it's still really there. Know. I've heard of it. Yeah. I've heard yeah. about it. I know just, was, when I was there with Jack, um, there was somebody there that was talking a lot about the exorcism, but mm. yeah, I just know it was a father Alphonsus from St. Bonaventure University. I think he went twice, but it it just made it worse. Because St. Bonaventure is right there. I didn't realize right this the last time. Yeah. I didn't realize that until last time we were there. Yeah. Mm. Um, John, I was just going to ask you. Um, I totally forgot now. Okay. <laughs> it was important to oh, the history. It, now, weren't there, wasn't there some kind of a Native American skirmish on the property? I understood that there were a that lot is, of Natives. That is one across. of the stories. One of the stories. There was a massacre they, either on or very close to the to the property. And well, my understanding is down by, now when was the last time you were there? A couple of years ago? 20, 2020. Okay, so, so. In uh, August 2020. So when you leave the house and you're going towards the pond, no, is the new pier there? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. and then to the right of the pier where it's all cleared, my understanding is that's where supposedly the skirmish was. Oh. Oh, okay. I've, I've, I've heard different versions. I have too. It's on the property, <coughs> or it was close by the property. Yeah. No, I've I've heard mm. the same thing, but yeah. but that's what I heard was that. Just to to the right of the pond, or right of the where the new uh, dock is, where yeah. the pier is, that area that's all cleared. That's where the skirmish was. That's that's my understanding. Yeah. Okay. The, the last time we were there, we we all went. I don't know. It was probably around midnight or so. We said, "Let's go walk up to the to the tree." You know. So we were walking out towards the path up to the tree, and we heard something growling at us. And, Oh man! So they go. said uh, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> it was probably a bear. Well, you know, we we um, that's, my, that's what I think. I got to tell you, not so. I don't, it wasn't last time we were there, but the time before. Everybody was up at the damn tree, and Sandra Perez and I were a little further down the hill, and she was going through a Bigfoot thing, and she started whacking away at one of the trees uh, with a big stick. Oh, and to this day, I yeah. think I think we got responses. <laughs> Probably did. Everybody insists that we're both crazy, yeah. but you know, it seems, I, mean, I think we got responses. Place is out in the middle of nowhere. No question about you know? 
There's plenty of places uh, Bigfoot could hide. Right, and, I'm, and I'll tell you, man, the first night, so when, when, like I said, when Sue and I went there with Jack, I can remember getting there and saying to Suzanne, this is going to be terrible because there's 9,000 people here. You know what I mean? This How many is, were there really? A lot. <laughs> Eight, so, ten. A bunch. That was, that was, an, that was an, a slight exaggeration. Mm. Uh, but it turned out that <clears throat> I'm going to say half of them were Bigfoot guys. Half of them went outside and never came back in the house. Oh, really? really? Yeah. Yeah, they wanted to explore. So it turned outside. out it wasn't too many people for the investigation yeah. at all because most of those guys left. Speaking of, uh, maybe I'm confusing this, but you had a photograph of a footprint down by yeah. the was that down by the pond. Was mm. that a Bigfoot? No. Oh, okay. We, we think it sounds so silly when you say this out loud. <laughs> We we think we think it's a puckwudgie. No kidding. Uh, what what, what does it look like? The the footprint. It's like a I don't know. It's like a, a toddler Hooked. size. Hooked. No. No. Toes. Maybe four toes, but they're spread wide apart. Really. The thing about it was. So so this was in the winter, mm, and there was in snow. The snow, yeah. And it was there was only it was the time it was only the four of us. It was Eva, Amanda, Suzanne, and I. Suzanne was in the house, so Eva and Amanda and I were outside by the pond, and we saw these footprints look like they came out of the bushes. And I'm like, where the hell did those come from? What the heck are and they? It looked like a man's footprint, like a boot print. But then, like there, so there were like three, and then. All of a sudden, it looked like a man's size footprint, but a bare foot. And then, as they as they moved, you know how there's like the this is before that, this <clears throat> is before the walkway went all the way around the pond. Oh, yeah. So there was a long ways from the bushes to the pond. Um, the footprints were getting smaller, and then by the time they got across that little track. And out to the pond where the pond was frozen, they were like toddler size, but kind of like, I don't know, kind of deformed, huh? Yeah. Huh? Don, it sounds like a shapeshifter. Yeah. And it sounds like an interdimensional being. Well, it was the strangest I mean, thing because just that day, I forget who we met there. I forget who met us at the house. It wasn't Danny. Whoever it was, was telling us about puck wedgies. Oh, really? <laughs> and I so I have no idea if that if if that had something to do with it or or, or what. I haven't decided. It might have yeah, something, but, yeah. But I'll tell you what, I mean that's that's what we thought it was. Just love to say the word puck wedgie anyway. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure if it's puck wedgie or pudge wedgie. You know? No, it's puck wedgie. It is puck wedgie. Yeah, P U C K. You know, I don't know a lot of people probably don't know what puck wedgies are, not that anybody really does, but um, th there are different entities in the astral realm and also entities that seem to shapeshift. And the Pukwudgie, well, there was a strain or a, a race of supposedly Native Americans or a race of beings up at American Stonehenge. And there was a name for them and it was very close to Pukwudgie. And they were like small, dark Native Americans. Really? Yeah. It's, hmm. it's mentioned in Hans Holzer's book. But then it, their personality was so similar to what I've heard about in the, um, not the Bermuda Triangle, but the, um, the that other, one down there, yeah. Bridgewater, Bridgewater, Bridgewater Triangle. Yeah. And they are very often seen or heard or whatever. And um, there was a medium who, who supposedly was taken over by the spirit of the Pukwudgie. So who knows what they are? But we can't really just pass it off and say, no, it doesn't exist. No. Because there is a lot of evidence that there's something that we don't understand and they've given it the name Pukwudgie. Yeah, I was told that Pukwudgie in, in, I don't know, what is the tribe that's Seneca? It could be. That Pukwudgie meant tiny men, tiny men who vanish in the forest or, or wow. something like that. No. Wasn't, uh, I forget a name now, don't we know somebody who was attacked by one? 
in Bridgewater? Well, Maureen Wood. Maureen, she, yeah, yes. she went there and she was, she channeled one. Oh, she channeled And one. she became very violent. And they managed to, to, to bring her out of it. Mm. But I, I just think that's fascinating. And who, who knows? And they well, seem I to mean, be. I think that's what we got a picture of. Oh, you got a picture of it? Oh, the you foot, mean the, foot, the footprints. footprints? Oh, I would love to see that. Absolutely. And the fact that it changed with the steps is really unusual. And to I, capture. When I asked you if you had any pictures, I should have thought of that. You could have sent. Yeah, me I, that. I wasn't even thinking about it. Yeah, you could did have sent did me you that. know? You didn't know about the pictures, did you? Yeah, I did. Oh. I remember yeah, the picture, but I I didn't remember what it was. I was thinking Bigfoot. But it was Littlefoot instead. Yeah, it was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, anything else that you can that comes to mind about the Hinsdale house? Not really. I tell you, <clears throat> that other time, <clears throat> that same trip, when it was just the four of us, um, I know we were sitting up in that main bedroom upstairs, just the four of us sitting like in a circle. And at some point I said, um, I said, ladies, I gotta, I have to tell you something. <laughs> and they all looked at me and I said, I am scared to death. What? And they all looked at me, and Amanda said, what? And I said, I am scared out of my wits. You just sensed evil? Was that All it? of a sudden, it just happened. Yep. The only reason I didn't flee was because wherever I went, I'd have been alone, and I didn't want to <clears> be <throat> out of that. Mm -hmm. That has happened yeah. to me, so I know exactly. No, the, girls, the girls are so good to me. You, you know, Amanda, <laughs> Amanda, Amanda went into this patter about how well, that's what they do, you know, they attack your strength. They they know who the strength of the group is and that's who they go after. And I'm like, yeah. Thanks. Hey, thanks yeah. I was just I was just scared to death. That's all I know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Memorable place. So it's a it's a great place. And we'll be back there in a couple of weeks. Okay. Well, oh. I hope to go back too. Well, I don't know if it was your group, but I did want to ask you if it was. I had heard that some people who were going to investigate on their approach to the building, one or two people got seriously nauseated. Oh, I do. I get sick. Do you? I've gotten sick every single, when you go up the road and you take a left to go down to the house, Yeah. Down at the that driveway, corner, the dirt driveway. I pull you, over and throw up every I, time I've been. And you want to go back? To the Hensdale house. Oh. I that is every single so time. unusual. Pull over right at that curb. But then after that, you feel yeah, sick fine. at all? Yeah. Strange. Now, you're not the only one, though, right? I thought there was also a woman that it happened to. No, I don't know. Okay, maybe it was just you I heard about, but that is really know, pretty but, but uh, that's, strange. Yeah, that's me. I, I get, I've get i gotten sick every single time. Oh, my gosh, darn. And you're going back. Boy, yeah, you're but I mean, it's time. not, you know, it's just, I, I just assume it's nerves. Yeah. I'm well, probably. it could be, but why that spot every time? Yeah, I don't know. Very odd. Yeah. Well, do you have some more pictures for us, Willie? Well, I thought maybe we could move on. Can you just this. go back one, though? Yeah. I would like to oh. pay, pay homage oh. real quick. Absolutely. <laughs> Another one of my favorite places that haven't been in years. The Houghton Mansion, and where is it? Yeah. I would give anything to go back to this place. Yeah. Anything. It's, no, it's closed up now, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. The Houghton Mansion. How fortunate Man. we were to get in there while it was, while it was open. So um, where is it? North Adams. Okay, it's the Houghton Mansion, Houghton just so Mansion, everybody yeah. catches that. Yeah, it's the Houghton Mansion. And so why are you so fond of it? Well, it's a, it was a crazy active Oh, was it? Place. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so? Absolutely. And it's a beautiful, I mean, of course, it's a beautiful building. And it's, you know, the, the Masonic Temple aspect of it is just astonishing. And I, I always loved uh, investigating in the temple mm. about it. And yeah. is that in the center of the house? Uh, no, no, it's, it's kind of on the back of the house. Kind of on the back side. Okay. Kind of on the back of the house. Our first, the GBPA first Mac one first team picture was on the stairs to nowhere in the back of the. <laughs> you know those those these concrete stairs that kind of go no place. Um, hmm. We have a we have a young guy by the name of Matt McLean, a a, a psychic, who works with us sometimes. He. He did readings, did group readings for us last Halloween. Really great guy. And um, the first time he ever 
went anywhere with us or did anything with us, I brought him here. And he walked into the chauffeur's room. Mr. Witters. Mr. Witters. And he said, this is the saddest room I've ever been in in my oh, life. Oh, no. really? And then he said, but he didn't do it here. And he walked right over to the window, pointed at the garage and said, he did it out there. But he thought about it here. But he said, was did it he his... know the story? No. No, he didn't no. know anything. Would you he like said, to quickly mention it? Yeah, I mean, Mr. Witters was the, he was the, the chauffeur. chauffeur. Um, and he was, you know, he, he handled all the, and correct me, you, you know the story as well or probably better than me. He, he handled all the horses and stuff for mm -hmm. the Houghton family. And then once they moved on to automobiles, I think A.C. Houghton just basically said, okay, okay, man, you're the chauffeur now. Yeah, you're going to drive yeah, now. Something like that, yeah. <laughs> and Witter said, you know, yeah, yeah okay. Uh, I'll give it a shot. The, <laughs> and one of the very first trips he took. Um, on, on the way to Vermont. On, on the way to Vermont, he had a very, very bad accident. Some of the two of the girls were killed. The door... One of them was killed outright. I think it was the daughter. The wife died later. Well, that's what I mean. One of them was killed on the spot, and then somebody died back at the at the house. Yeah. Uh, and, and it really wasn't his fault, right? No, wasn't, wasn't it the terrain fault. It was, or something? There was construction in the road, and he was trying to go around it. Okay. And he wasn't real familiar with the car. Yeah, you know? yeah. still learning. And so he, he went off a cliff and it rolled. And so, so he, it was he, that night. Felt so yeah, guilty. He just felt so guilty about it. He, he shot himself. Yeah, he shot himself in the garage. Yeah, very, very sad. And so then, that's why the room was so sad. And then it was, what was it only about a week later? Houghton himself died. Yeah, yeah AC Houghton so, died about a week after yeah. that. Wait, Not was, from injuries, but. No, uh, just died. No, broken heart, wasn't it? Yeah, it was exactly, just, yeah. yeah. Yeah, just died. Lost his daughter and his wife, and very, very sad. So what became of the estate? Was it sold to the Masonic Temple? Is that what happened? I really don't know what the ownership situation I don't know is. Either. I really don't know. Okay. You and know that Masonic temple, though, is you, you, you go in there, you can just feel like there's something going on all around. Oh, you man. Know? Like, mm. I remember this kind of, there's the edge of the temple, then there's like openings in this walkway around both sides. All the way around. It's like mm. somewhere out in that walkway there is just activity. activity. I, have a, I have a great picture. I'll bet you if I showed it to you, Lynn, you'd 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 say, "Oh my God!" That I took looking down one of those hallways, oh, yeah. Yeah. where I said, "What the heck is going on down there?" And and I'm sure we went down there at some point, but initially I just took a picture looking down this hallway. Well, yes. do you feel that the energy from the temple has something to do with the the, the rituals that were performed there, or something to do with the history of the house? Oh, I, don't, I really don't. You don't know. have any idea. I got the. Uh... One night when I was there, I was up in Mary's room sleeping. I couldn't sleep. So I got up. I went up into the uh, temple by myself. And I was sitting up in one of the big chairs there. There you go. And uh, all by myself. There was other people who were over in Mr. Witter's room. And, you know, I mean, nobody anywhere near there. And I got, uh, when I listened to my recording later, I had the sound of the piano. One note. Really? Yeah. Yeah, and good. so I was thinking, well, is there a piano in there? <laughs> you know? And so I went back next time, well, I looked at a picture or something, and yes, there is a There's piano. There's usually there. a piano in a in a Masonic in a Yeah. In a in a temple there usually is a piano. Yeah, and there there is there. Or there was one. <coughs> yeah, there and if it had been a mouse or something, you know, stepped on it, I would have heard it. Yeah. Right. I, I didn't. I didn't hear it at the time. Yeah, it was quite a place. Yeah. So why is but, it closed now? I, you know what? I really don't know. I don't Condemned know whether they or... just decided they didn't want to deal with it anymore. Or... Is it still a temple, do you know? Or just close to investigation? I, I haven't or, the slightest yeah. idea. What it is. But, uh, we're, just, we're quickly running out of time here. Okay, so I let's move on to uh, getting, you know, We didn't get to where we wanted morning. to get to, that's for sure. Why not? Well, we've got the SS Salem to talk about a little bit more. The well, Sea Witch. Yeah, quickly. Uh, some kind of an event coming ah, up there look in at that. Uh, May. Been there. You've been there? Yeah. yeah. And you've done it too, and, uh, haven't you? <laughs> I want to give credit on that photograph, Eva, Eva Nagy. Yeah, yeah it's that's, beautiful she, work. She took, yeah, that's one of my favorite pictures of that ship. She yeah. does She does amazing yeah. work. What does she use, Adobe? 
I have, I have no idea. Okay. I think but it's just, but, but, I think I mean, it's just we, some phone app. All, almost all, you know, when we advertise our stuff, it's always using this filtered uh, nice. this filtered picture. It's really different. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, so anyway, uh, just really quickly, uh, coming up May 2021 and 22, we are going to have an expo paranormal exposition on the ship. It's the first time this has ever been attempted on yep. board the ship. It should be a good time. Friday night, uh, Don and his crew are going to lead the public uh, ghost hunt on board mm -hmm. the ship, which is sold out. Mm -hmm. That should but be then fine. Saturday and Sunday, we have great speakers, one of which you're, you're going to be speaking. Yep, I am the speaker. And we're going to we have uh, two days full of great speakers and vendors and. Uh, yeah, I saw the lineup came out today. And, yep. Uh, yep. Yep. It looks good. It's going to be fun. And you know, I think I told you for years I used to say, "Great location, great location would be perfect." Because that was a, coming from the standpoint of somebody who'd never actually undertaken the task. <laughs> uh -huh. I, I realized afterwards that maybe it wasn't as simple as I thought. Well, not I'm, simple. I'm, I'm realizing that now. It's it's a big project. Is yes. what it is. Uh, two levels? Is it going to take place on two levels? Two or three. Two or three. Two yeah. or three. Yeah, don't know. But it's going to be a great weekend. Well, I hope there, people really don't get is. lost. And I mean, you know, there's, there's no lack of space. That's for sure. No. No. Um, and you know. if anybody does want more information on it, you can go to Facebook and uh, just type in Power Expo 2022 and, and you'll find it. And you probably have something on your Absolutely. Website. USS Salem Paranormal Experience is our Facebook yep. page. And yep. You can or certainly you, find information there. Yep. Or, sure. or you go straight to the uh, ship's uh, website, yep. USS-Salem.org. Salem. Correct. Mm -hmm. And so where can they get register and buy tickets? Right there, USS-Salem.org. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I believe that uh, on that note, we're out of time. Oh, there we go. Dear. So, Don. Thank you very much for uh, making the trip up here. And no, thanks for having us. me. I told you, I always love seeing you guys. Such yeah. a pleasure and very informative. Thank you so much. I always learn something. And next week, uh, not, not next week, next month on the show, <laughs> uh, Sam Beltrusis is going to be oh, joining yeah. us. Yep. Author and That'll be investigator and TV personality. I went. I was a guest before Sam Beltrusis. Oh, yes. Ah, it was just a scheduled <laughs> conflict on, but yeah. You... <laughs> okay. Well, that's right. it for Edge of Reality TV. All right. And Thank you for we'll, joining us. And we'll talk to you next month.